What's happening, everybody? Welcome back. This is Forgo, and there's a couple things that we're going to talk about today. The first thing, starting with this new game mode in the Untold Naraka event, which is, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this thing, but it's a pretty self-explanatory game mode now. Every single day, guys, you get a little timer down here in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. I'll go ahead and raise my face so you can see it. This little thing is going to keep counting down and counting down and counting down, and then you'll be able to receive a certain amount of rewards. It's going to help you level up your characters so that way you can move up in higher tiers of this. This is important because once you start moving up, you're going to be able to get these rewards in here. You're going to be able to get a few black cards, 100 black cards. You're going to get some high opportunity materials, some memories, and some experience pods. And that is nice, right? It's just free goodies that you can actually get. So you want to make sure that you do do this. Now, this is a pretty simple game mode. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I'm going to go ahead and run through it really quick with you guys. Now, you use these materials right here to actually these kinetic potions to actually upgrade your stars, level up your stars so that way you can gain more power. And you're going to use these items right here to actually uh, upgrade your characters to level up the level of them. Now, right now, you guys can see that Masashi is at 46, and then you're also going to have your little team members. So the way this works, guys, is once you, as you level up these characters, you're going to gain more and more characters as you go. As many of you already know, you start off with Masashi, then you're going to end up getting Roseblade, then you're going to end up getting Kamu. And as you guys can see, one's a guard, one's a knight, one's an assassin. And you, these are core characters. So you can only have one core character on your teams whenever you're fighting. So do keep that in mind. And then you have your squad members. And you're going to have, you know, Shooter, Assassin, Guard, you're going to have Knights, all these different types of characters, and that's really, really important. You'll also notice that as you go through the stages, you're going to be gaining more and more of these characters where you're going to have, you know, a B rank, an A rank, and S ranks. Obviously, the S ranks are going to be the most powerful. So what do you essentially want to do? This event's going to last a long time, and you really don't have to do this, but if you're trying to get through it as fast as possible, what you want to do is... You want to just try to level up your characters as little as possible and then just start putting a good amount of investment in these S rank characters. Okay, now all these characters are going to come in useful no matter what, depending on the kind of typing that they have. So I'll do a little example run for you guys. Oh, yeah, let me show you guys something else really quick. Also, as you level up your core character, you can actually unlock some other little things that they can do, like, you know, Masashi here. Whenever you level up even further, you'll be able to, you know, do a certain attack that does deal lower damage, but. It also will give you a heal, which is nice. That really, really is going to help his survivability. And then his orbs, right, will actually ch change the effects of the orbs, which is actually really, really cool. Now, I've just been auto-upgrading every single thing that I've done so far. But I'm going to do a little run for you guys right now. So I'm at stage 19. Okay, we're going to hit about preparations. And you can see the rewards that I can get. Now, you guys can see that we have an up on every one of these things. That's because I actually have the advantage. I'll go ahead and remove one of these. You just click on it. You can click X to remove it. And it says recommended shooter. So it's really, really self-explanatory. It tells you exactly what you need to be doing. We need a shooter here, right? You can only have one core member, okay? So we're going to go to squad member. And since my shooter is at S rank, I'm going to go ahead and equip him, right? And we're going to go ahead and... Do just one little practice run. I am going to fail at this. And then we'll just do another run where hopefully we can succeed. And you always want to make sure that your core member also has the advantage. And you literally just kind of run through their skills. It's a really kind of a slow-mo thing. And it's a really cool game mode because it's if you've ever played Nier Automata, they actually use this view in some of the game whenever you're playing. Come on, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Not bad. Look like I had a little lag there. Okay. Smack him one. Smack him one. I don't know. Are we going to get through this? I don't think so. We're going to die. Yeah. We died, right? And my shooter is still up here available uh, getting it done. But uh, he's probably going to die, right? We're pretty damn close to getting through this. And those things are going to kill me. By the way, you'll be able to use this guy. Uh, later on, right? So we lost that fight. Okay. So whenever you lose your fight, all you got to do is just level up whatever you got going on. So in here, I'm going to go ahead and level up this guy because he's at level 46. All right. I'm just going to hit upgrade. Well, we'll just hit auto upgrade. Sorry. And we're just going to go ahead and take it up to level 60. There we go. Now he's at level 60. We should be able to get it done. 
And you always want to make sure that you are using the right core character. So you can see my core character. There's no up or down here. If it says down, that means they have the disadvantage and you don't want to be using them. So I'll go ahead and remove them. It says recommended shooter. So far, I don't have a shooter. All I have is an assassin, a knight, and a guard. My face is actually in the way, but just a guard, a knight, and an assassin. I'm going to use my guard because he has the most battle power. And we should be able to get through this this time. I think that Masashi will probably stay alive long enough in order to progress through this. And guys, don't worry. If you can't get through this the first day, whatever, you'll go. You'll get through it eventually because you're going to keep getting more and more resources every single day. Those things are on an actual timer. And you'll see that we have an ultimate also available here in a little bit. We need to do one more orb. There we go. And actually, we don't even need to do our orb. That's awesome. Okay. And smack. Come on, come on, come on, man. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Get over there, get over there, get over there. There, we hit that super. And boom, we won, right? And that's literally all you gotta do, guys. Just let leave your characters as little as possible and only really try to invest in your S rank characters. You're gonna have to invest a little bit and maybe an A rank. Uh, you know, go and maybe an A rank member or something, but you really want to try to focus your resource in S rank if you're trying to get through this as fast as possible. And now we just obtained this guy right here who is a shooter. So now we get a shooter available. So whenever we face another stage where they actually re recommend using a shooter, then we would. So you can see right here that we have a down, right? So let me click out of this. We need a guard member. So I would look go, look down here. You could click on all classes here. You could go to guard, right, to bring up as many guards as possible. And we do have a B rank guard. We got an A rank guard. We don't have an S rank guard. All we got is an A rank. So I would literally put him in there, and now we're up and ready to go. And you can literally click off these, and this shows the guard. So when I equip this S rank, you can see it says down. So you don't really want to use him. You want to use somebody that's actually going to have an advantage. And since this uh, shooter here has a decent amount of BP, we're going to use him. He has no disadvantage. And then we can get, jump in here and do the fight. Like I said, guys, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just want to make sure that you do this so that way you can get through here, get all these rewards from the system mission. Now, let's jump into these deals that are actually in the top up shop man these are pretty insane guys now this is only going to regard those of you out there that are willing to spend money in this game and these are the deals that you know i and many other youtubers have been talking about for some time where you can actually and one's going to show up also for 2b as well guys this that isn't in here yet because her banner hasn't showed up yet it actually shows up on the 20th of this month but you can see that A2, you can get 30 shards, you get a memory resonance. This guarantees a memory resonance for your memory for about 50 American dollars. 300 rainbow cards is about 50 American dollars. And then you can also buy this one here where you get 10 shards, you get 500 collab tickets for just, you know, about $5 in total. And this is pretty awesome, especially for like these characters because it allows you to level them up at a much a faster rate. Those of you that have been playing this game correctly, you should already have your A2 at double S. If you pull for her first before you obtained her from using the shards from the event, then you could have easily pulled her. You could have used the shards from the event. You could have got her for the double S. And then you would have also collected the shards from the news here. Once you took her to double S, you would have automatically collected these. So right now I got these 30 shards, right? And then you'll see that my A2 actually right now has... 50 shards available, right? She's got 50 shards. You need 90 in total to go from double S to triple S. So you can literally buy both those packs, which is the equivalent of about $55, and take her to triple S, which is exactly what I'm going to do. You don't have to use black cards in order to do that. Now, if you're free to play, then obviously you don't want to do that. You're going to have to pull for her another time. So something that I can let you all know is that if you are interested in trying to take A2 to triple S, you're free to play, you don't have a lot of black cards available, and you just pulled her the one time, you got her to double S, then what you want to do is you just want to wait for the rerun, pull for her once, and then the game is actually going to give you 30 shards for free. At least that is what I've been told. I'm still waiting for the near rerun to show up on JP, which I do think is going to show up very, very soon, but right now I don't have no, no indication 
as to when it will actually show up. So I don't really know to confirm what I just told you about getting the extra 30 shards for free when you pull for the character just one time. But that is what I've been told by CN players. Another thing in this shop that's actually pretty godly, guys, is this pack right here. Now, this is for 600 rainbow cars. This is the equivalent of 100 American dollars. But look at what you get in this thing. You get... 7,500 black cards, which takes about six weeks to farm free to play in this game. So you save yourself six weeks of time, right? And you'd have these black cards during this collaboration where you could actually pull for these characters and you get an S rank selector out of this. This is nuts. I didn't even know this existed where you can actually get, you know, Liv, you can get Lee. These are all S rank characters, obviously. Amber, Tenebrium, and Nanami, right? But you can also get Alpha, you can get uh, Bianca, you can get Lucia Plume, and you can get Rosetta from here. This will give you 30 stars or just actually give you the character if you need them. So if you've already missed a banner and you want to guarantee that you're going to get the character that you want from here, do not, I would never go for Liv, uh, Lee, or Karenina, or Kamoi, or Nanami. I would definitely, if I was going to buy this thing and use this S rank selector, it would definitely either be for Alpha, Bianca, Plume, or Rosetta. Plume being really the most valuable since he's the only ice damage dealing monster in the game. But this is pretty awesome, guys. I'll probably end up buying this because this is a very very good deal because i mean the thing is guys 7500 black cards if you look at the black card exchange rate 7500 black cards look at this this is 100 equivalent dollars right here this is 600 rainbow cards also and you get 7300 black cards but in with this deal you actually get an s rank selector on top of that Right for the same price, it's a really, really awesome deal. If you're interested in doing it, I'm you know, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm gonna end up buying both these packs for A2 because those 40 charts are gonna, are gonna finish her out and take her to triple S, and then I'm gonna buy this pack for 9S so that way I can go ahead and take him, use these 30 charts, and just go ahead and take him to double S and get that extra memory resonance. Right? I know it's a good amount of money, I'm probably gonna end up spending about $300 on this collaboration, and then I'm probably just gonna buy this right here this is just a really too good of a deal to pass up also the anniversary banner it should be showing up today today is the 15th so it should show up later the reset hasn't happened for pgr yet so that's why it's not in the game yet for me as i'm recording this video but i mean this is a pretty insane deal guys if you do have the money and you can spend it especially during this collaboration where you can actually gain these black cards it's honestly really really freaking sweet and i'm probably gonna end up queuing up who would i use the s rank selector for myself i don't really know it's honestly between alpha and rosetta uh for me because the thing is like whenever you get rosetta to triple s you're gonna see a big big difference uh for your rosetta as well as for your physical team now i know that the near team is physical but i've said in a previous video that alpha still has the highest burst damage in the game she's still amazing at four pain cage and still going to be number one for pain cage if you have the same leveled up near team compared to the same leveled up uh physical alpha team which would be Rosetta, Alpha, and B Live. And whenever you take Rosetta to Triple S, her physical reduction increases by another 20%, which means that you're going to do a whole lot more damage with Rosetta on top of with Alpha. Plus, Rosetta is the only character that has an actual advantage against Alpha herself in Pain Cage which can be a big benefit for getting those better scores and getting better rewards out of Pain Cage. So I'm actually thinking about actually using that s rank selector for Rosetta and getting her closer to getting her to triple S. But guys, let me know if you're having any problems with the new game mode in the Untold Naraka event. Let me know what you think about all those packs and what your plans are. And I do stream on Twitch at 9 p.m. GND plus 7 time. The link is in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care and have a good one. See everybody.